Shawnee, aka Total Makeup Junkie 101, and welcome back to Holiday Hoopla on my channel. I know I say it at the beginning of every Holiday Hoopla video, but in case you guys didn't know yet, I am doing a giant review series where I am reviewing a ton of the big makeup holiday gift sets and palettes. And I have done so many videos already. I will link my playlist down below. Definitely check my playlist if you guys are interested in any other big makeup holiday release because I have been doing videos and I will continue doing videos for a while. But today we are going to be talking all about the new Lorac Mega Pro 3 palette. This was a really exciting release, not just for me, but I think for you guys too, because this is one of the products that I have been requesting to review the most. So let's jump right into the review. This is what the new Lorac Mega Pro 3 palette looks like on the outside. In case you guys are looking for this in store, this is what the actual box is going to look like. The box is quite a bit thicker than the palette itself, as you guys can see. This palette retails for $59, and I did pick it up on Ulta.com, but I do believe Ulta stores are either carrying it right now or they will be very soon. The packaging itself is exactly the same any of the other Lorac Pro palettes or the Mega Pro. It does have kind of like that rubberized feel. I am very, very worried about this palette because it is a really beautiful, pure white color. I mean, once this palette gets some really significant use, this is going to look like a hot mess because of the material makeup and powder and cream and just everything sticks to this palette and honestly it is almost impossible to remove and then when you open it up once again same layout you do get a mirror and then as always you get 32 shadows this palette has the same layout as any of the other mega pro palettes you get two rows of mattes and two rows of shimmer and if you guys are familiar with any of the other traditional Lorac pro palettes these permanent ones here this palette itself is exactly double the height it's the exact same width and it's got exactly double the amount of shades now before I talk about my thoughts on the texture of the shadows the color selection I'll do some comparisons of the other pro palettes um, let's go ahead and just jump into swatches of everything you get in this palette I swatch the palette in rows across so here are swatches of the first row in the palette this is an all matte row from left to right we have pink cream, tan, pecan, walnut, dusty mauve, violet gray, eggplant, and dark navy. Here we have swatches of the second row of the palette. Once again, an all matte row. From left to right, we have crepe, toffee, mist, vintage, hickory, maple, bark, and jet black. Here we have swatches of the third row in the palette. This is the first all shimmery or metallic-y type row. From left to right, we have snow, kava, cider, bellini, brown sugar, sequoia, glacier, and deep fog. And here we have swatches of the final row in the palette. Once again, an all shimmery or metallic row. From left to right, we have tulle, pink bronze, rust, rose quartz, olive, dark roast, pomegranate, and licorice. So as you guys can tell by the swatches of this entire palette, pretty much all of the shades swatch really well. If you guys are familiar with the texture of any of the other Lorac Pro palettes or any of their old Mega Pro palettes, you kind of know the way these shadows are going to perform. The mattes are really pigmented. They're really soft, very smooth. These shadows are almost so soft that if you went into it with a fluffy brush they will kick up a lot of powder these are definitely some of the more powdery shadows I've ever tried that doesn't mean that they're not pigmented but I feel like that powderiness does allow them to blend on the eyes really nicely in terms of these shimmers or these metallic shades they are very very densely pigmented I think there are some really beautiful standout shades in the palette the ones my eye go to is rose quartz which is this shade down here, is the most beautiful metallic rose gold I've ever seen. I will say that in the shimmery part of this palette, there were a couple of shades that I wasn't super impressed by, like pomegranate, which in my opinion is probably the most unique shade in this whole palette. I feel like that one didn't have quite as much pigment, or even olive, which is this olive green here, didn't really look very olive on the eyes. As far as my overall thoughts on the quality, of this palette it is very very consistent to any of the other Lorac Pro 
Pro palettes. If you're familiar with this formula, you know what you're getting into. You know these are going to be a little bit more powdery, but you can absolutely get the pigmentation and the longevity out of them. Now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty part of this review, and that is going to be my thoughts on the overall color selection. Now here's the thing about this palette. If you look at it overall, it is a neutral eyeshadow palette. And here's the thing, Lorac has a ton of neutral eyeshadow palettes in their permanent existing line. Many of which I'm sure you guys probably already own or at the very least have already seen, have already swatched. So is this a unique product to the Lorac line? I definitely think not. Maybe if you don't already own any of the other Lorac Pro palettes or any of the Urban Decay Naked palettes or any of the literally hundreds, if not thousands of neutral eyeshadow palettes there are on the market, potentially you would be interested in this. But when I look at this color selection, I think, yeah, I have this in a million other forms. And just to prove my point, I'm gonna go ahead and do some side-by-sides of the three other Lorac Pro palettes I have, as well as the two Lorac Unzipped palettes I have. I most definitely would have done side-by-sides of this Mega Pro next to the other two Mega Pros, but for some reason, I cannot find mine. And I'm not gonna continue talking about it because it's kind of making me sad to think about, but anyways. We're gonna go ahead and just do some side-by-sides. So let's start off by comparing it to my favorite Lorac Pro palette, the original, the one that I have used for so many years now. I love this. So here's a side-by-side -side look at those two next to each other. Of course, on the top, we have the new Mega Pro 3, and on the bottom, we have the original Pro palette. So now let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side with the Lorac Pro Pro 2 palette. So here are those two side by side. Once again, on the top, we have the Mega Pro 3, and on the bottom, we have the Pro 2. I definitely think the silvers and the grays that are in the Mega Pro 3 are already existing in the Pro 2. Next up, I want to do a side by side of the newly released Lorac Pro 3 palette. Here are those two side by side. Once again, Mega Pro 3 on top, the original Pro 3 on the bottom, and I definitely think the Pro 3 has more of those eggplants or purples that the Mega Pro 3 also has. Now I want to go ahead and do a side-by-side -side of the Lorac Unzipped palette. This is the original palette that I have loved for a really long time. It's got some beautiful rose golden shades. Here we have the Mega Pro 3 on top and the Lorac Unzipped on the bottom. You can see the pans in the Unzipped are so much larger than the Mega Pro 3 and the shades are really, really similar. And then the final side-by-side -side I'm gonna do with the Lorac Unzipped Gold Palette. And here we have those two compared, Mega Pro 3 on top, Unzipped Gold on the bottom. I definitely think the Unzipped Gold is a lot more warmer and more yellowy toned than really anything you see in the Mega Pro 3. So as you guys could probably tell in all of those side-by-sides, if you guys own any of the other Pro palettes or most of the other pro palettes, you definitely don't need this one. Unless you're just a collector, and if so, I'm sure you already purchased this palette even before watching my review, but I do think the quality in this palette is very consistent to any of the other pro palettes. Really great quality, but color selection, for me, still leaves something to be desired, so that would make this not really a must-have. Okay, now let's go ahead and dive into the geeky, nerdy portion of this review. This is my favorite. Part. I love talking numbers. So like I said, this palette does retail for $59. You get a total net weight of 12.8 grams of product. That is not a lot of product, especially considering you get 32 shadows in here. So that breaks down to 0.4 grams per pan, which is very, very small. Just to give you guys a frame of reference, each of these pans is less than one third the size of a full size MAC shadow. So if you take 12.8 grams and considering that this is a $58 palette, you are paying $4.61 per gram of shadow in this palette. That is really, really expensive in my opinion. Just to give you guys a frame of reference, if you watched my Kat Von D metal matte video, that giant Kat Von D holiday palette, those shadows were $1.60 
per gram. Is this formula any better than the Kat Von D? No, I actually prefer the Kat Von D formula over this one and you are paying a significant premium for this formula. Just keep that in mind. Anyways, that wraps up my review video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you guys haven't seen the rest of my holiday hoopla videos, be sure to check out that playlist. It's linked below. I will talk to you guys in my next video very, very soon on Saturday. I will see you then. Bye. Just say this here and now. This is probably the best most exciting this kit retails for $28 and you are getting six kind of deluxe size products.